Hey, so I just made a video covering some of the do's and don'ts with respect to creating your professional resume for a job in game development. And I wanted to explain why I was doing this video, which is I was requested from uh, someone who sent me a message on Reddit, Amir Azmi, who we're looking at his portfolio now. He asked me if I could give him some feedback and help. So I created those videos to kind of serve as a guide, and then I wanted to also provide um, individualized feedback for Amir specifically. So here we are at the front of his portfolio, and uh, let's take a look. Okay, to uh, to begin, this is his about, about me page, which I I, th I think is a, is a great place to start. Um, or maybe you could say something like my story or something like that. And um, so he notes here that he's a gameplay tools and graphics programmer. And then he describes kind of what he loves to do. And I think this is a really good paragraph um, where he explains that he's really passionate about gameplay mechanics specifically and working directly with designers and artists. And that is very much um, gameplay if it's on content that's user facing. Uh, and by user, I mean player. And it's very much a tools programmer if it's on content that's going to be used internally by other members of the team. But having read through his blog, it does seem he's much more excited about working directly with designers on problems that are going to be engaged by the player. And so I think it's safe to say that Amir really wants to be a gameplay programmer. And the reason why I mention that is because what we should do is try and craft a resume and portfolio around a single title. So if he's trying to apply to, and later we'll see, he's also... Uh, mentions, for example, here that he's really skilled at production. Um, if he's trying to apply to a production role, then he should apply to a production role, right? But I think it's the case that he wants to be a programmer or a software engineer in industry, and really he should rework his resume and his portfolio in order to aim towards that objective. So I would seriously consider just chopping out this section, and wherever possible, I would remove the word developer or programmer and place engineer instead. Uh, I think that goes just a little bit further in, um, I don't know, it, j it just seems a little bit more official to me. Uh, game developer, same here. Um, I think for gameplay engineers specifically, one thing, because that, that's my profession as well, that, that's what I do. Um, one thing that I've embraced and I found that people are really receptive of this, this point of view is seeing a gameplay engineer as a service-oriented engineering role. Because a gameplay engineer is really about taking designer and VFX artists and narrative writer work and putting it on the screen and, and putting pixels in front of players. And a gameplay engineer might at some points need to make design decisions on their own, maybe very small ones with respect to the spec to implementation. Um, but for the most part, I would say a gameplay engineer is a service-oriented role, and I think highlighting that and, and really underscoring that you're a team player is really important, especially if you're going to speak to kind of some of the other design experience you have, because I find it rare, especially as the team gets larger, I find it very rare that um, teams are receptive to the engineer who also thinks he's a designer and maybe also thinks he's a producer at the same time, right? I think for the most part, um, the larger the group, the more specialization is expected and appreciated. Uh, with an indie team, you know, all that goes out of the window. The smaller teams, you know, sometimes depend on someone playing multiple hats at the same time. Okay, so then he has uh, several... Okay, so technical skills here. I would remove that. I would instead embed the resume if possible. I know you reference it here, but really I think that's where we're going to the portfolio to find. If you have your portfolio linked at the bottom of your email foot or something like that, which you certainly should, then they're going to want to jump here. They're going to want to see the resume. That, that's really where everybody's heading. It's always to the resume. So what I would do is I'd just embed it here if I were you. Um, and then if I click resume, instead of bringing me to this screen, I would just immediately download the resume. Okay, so you have it embedded here. Instead, embed it on the About page and have this link resume just be this link, which is essentially the download link. When I click resume here, it should just download it like that. Okay, that's what I would do. Oh, no. I got lost. Um, I 
I, I doubt that many people are sharing your About Me page on Twitter and Facebook. Um, if you have had success with this, I'd be interested to hear about it. But I, I think it makes sense to probably remove these. Um, okay, so projects. So jumping into projects, we have a little description of these three different projects you worked on. Um, I actually didn't realize that projects itself was a link. I just saw it as a drop down menu and I clicked directly on Project Gemini the first time. So if you want people to click on this projects page, maybe you should link it directly in the about, like something like check out my projects, click here, click here, and then it will go to the projects page and then you know they could dive deep on something. Um, I think the best project description you did was on Zombie Boy. So on Zombie Boy, uh, Amir did a really good job of just outlining what is Zombie Boy, what did I work on, what did I learn, and what mistakes did I make. And what mistakes did I make? And that's it, okay? And he keeps it very concise like that. And I think, here, I'll give you a like. Oh, I gotta log in for this? <laughs> this, is, this is a big hassle, man. I don't know how many people are gonna share or like this, but it might be worth your while to just take him out, in my, in my opinion. Um, unless you're already getting engagement, I, I think it might make sense to chop that stuff out. Um, but these are really concise sections, right? And I think they're exactly what someone would be interested in looking at. Whereas with this Project Gemini, um, it's similar, but then it, 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 it goes on a bit of a tangent and, and I think it it's, takes a little bit too much time to explain what you're doing here. I would really focus on, on the key wins, the key takeaways. Um, a lot of this stuff is just excessive. So for example, um, I know you, you worked really hard in these gameplay features, but the granularity of a drone which shoots one bullet versus you know shoots X bullets um, you know here we're getting into kind of like design which wouldn't even be applicable to a you know I, I think a gameplay engineering anyway I, I think maybe if you wanted to like highlight your role as a combat designer that might be interesting but um, you know that that's not your role anyway so I think I would really try to focus on your strengths and just explaining the engineering aspect of things uh, and I think the format which you approach Zombie Boy with is really great. So I, I would I would replicate that format and keep it concise like this. Um, I think it could probably be even shorter. I would also focus on, again, what do you want to be? Are you going to be a gameplay engineer? Then focus all your responsibilities on what did you do as a gameplay engineer. So right here, you kind of have it split between being a programmer and also a designer. What I would do is I would just squeeze those together if possible. Um, something like AI programming does read very much like a responsibility. And we never want to be listing responsibilities. We always want to be listing achievements. And because those imply responsibilities. So rather than saying AI programming, you should say something like implemented three decision trees, which allowed for, you know, multiple different AI enemies to be powered for fighting the player. You know, something like that. It's like, what did you do? That's my impact. Whereas with AI programming, well, did you do a little? Did you do a lot? It's very hard to tell. Additionally, I have no real sense of scope for this project with respect to how big the team was. And there's actually a lot of variance here. So one of these teams, I think he had five teammates on. The other team, he had like 14 teammates on. So it was like three times the size. But it's very hard to get a sense of that from these descriptions. And so I think in general, it should be more concise and you should really highlight that key information because uh, some of it, some of it's being overlooked here. Okay, so I see here that it's five programmers and development time was three months. Ah, oh, man, maybe there's a more concise way to say that. Um, I wouldn't date it. I would try to avoid dating the projects if possible. I know I do that, but I, it, it, it's nice because a website, it can kind of look like everything was made yesterday in a good way, in like the way that everything's still relevant. But if you say, you know, like this is a project I made, you know, four years ago, I think it paints a bad light. Um, and then so I see you have a little bit of a blog here as well as some tutorials. I think you could very easily combine these sections, maybe just turn your blog into a tutorial. You know, if you're talking about the particle system, and you're explaining it to the point of literally including source code, well, I think that's pretty close to a tutorial already. So you might very easily be able to combine these sections. And I would I would probably lean on the side of tutorials because I feel like, you know, assuming the role as someone who's teaching others and, and helping take what you've learned and share it 
it, it puts you in a position of someone who looks wise, but is also someone who you know wants to benefit the team and, and help others. So I, I would focus on tutorials there. Um, and, and I noticed you listed code samples as well. I haven't seen that a lot, but I don't, I don't have a very strong opinion on it at this time. Um, but I think it's interesting that you did that. Um, okay, so now let's look directly at the resume. So I, I think I have it downloaded here. Um, and I think I was just looking at Scott's resume. Let me, let me see if I can pull that back up. Okay. Now let's see if we can do half and half here. Okay, so um, this resume looks a lot like Scott's resume originally on the left, okay? I think we're seeing a lot of word clutter. Um, things are really squeezed together, and I'm not even looking at the words just yet. I'm just looking at the, the visual design here. Um, I, I think it looks a, like a little bit too much is being squeezed onto one page. So I would consider looking at some of the free templates online. I, I link them in the other video, but here's the website again. It's freezumes.com, and you could download the link of uh, these Word documents and then just directly edit them, which is great. Um, I would do that, or I would just consult with maybe one of your friends who's a visual designer just to get some some feedback on that. It'd be awesome if you could add a little bit of color, like Melissa, like Melissa's resume here. Um, but if not, e even just you know a little bit stronger design sense, like. You know, it's kind of silly, but this line down the center of Scott's resume, I think, really does help it stand out. Uh, something like that could go a long way in just, you know, preventing us from having, you know, paragraph after paragraph of text. Okay, so let's dive in a little bit deeper here. Um, so you, you, okay, so again, we have a strong title, which is great, but unfortunately, it's diluted by listing four different roles. So they're going to see a mirror, but are they going to see the graphics programmer, the gameplay programmer, the tools programmer, or the team producer? Uh, those are in a real AAA team, right? Those are four different people. So what we want to have is a very strong, firm resolution of who Amir wants to be in his career. And that would include just choosing one of these. So maybe this should instead say gameplay engineer. Uh, these looks, these links look a little bit sloppy. I think most of them can be removed. Maybe we could pull the projects. Maybe we could just list your uh, your portfolio under the name, and then we could leave this whole top right section empty. I don't think you need to directly link your LinkedIn within the resume. Um, what great place to do that actually is the about page of your website. So that that's a much more appropriate place to kind of list all your shows, socials, um, whether that be LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, etc. Um, okay, cool. So. Within each of these work experiences, I see that you're citing the language that you're using. So this is a really good way to kind of approach listing your skills. And I think it negates the reason for you to have a programming language section. You know, if you haven't worked on a project recently that has Java, maybe it's not your strongest language. Maybe you don't need to include it. Um, an exception is, of course, you know, if you're applying to a job that's specifically for Java, which in the case of game development is highly unlikely. Um, but if you are planning, you know, and if you're planning to work with HLSL level code, you're planning to write shaders, that could be relevant. Um, but what would be better is if you just referenced where you have used it in the project itself. So for example, if you did HLS code in Zombie Boy, then, you know, on this little list of custom engine C, include HLSL there and now they know that you're skilled in it and they can directly tie that you know so-called skill with the project you've put out you know using those skills so I think at the end of the day that's gonna be way better than just listing out the languages here and similarly uh, you know that same principle applies to really all of these lists here uh, you know hobbies an exception and maybe mathematics doesn't show through as much um, but you know, to, to show that you're a team leader or a team manager or a project scheduler, you know, at this point, it's really just a, a list of random useful things for a team. You know, I, I question to what degree uh, this is really helping the resume. If you feel you're a strong team manager, then you should reference an achievement you've completed as a team manager in one of these project descriptions. So for example, if you managed a team of five programmers to create a project, then just include that as a line item and from that they can determine that you're a good team manager rather than you know just coming up to them and saying, you know, trust me, I'm a great manager. Uh, I, I don't think uh, 
I just don't think listing it in this format is very helpful. I noticed you delineated um, work experience versus your stu your student projects. However, um, you've done something really impressive by actually publishing some of your student projects, right? So I think it might have been Gemini or one of the other ones. Yeah, so this one, Gemini, it's actually on the Steam store, which, you know, regardless of how many units you sold or what reviews your game got, that's incredible. That's a really big achievement. And, and so many people, you know, aren't able to publish their games. So I think that's a big win. Um, and I say that because I don't think you should delineate your student projects versus your so-called work experience. I think your student projects are work experience. And I would just kind of remove uh, that delineation instead just say, you know, th these are my recent projects and, and just show all of them. Um, the other big complaint I would have here is it should say your title in addition to what the what the project was. So if you're a gameplay engineer on Zombie Boy, it should say gameplay engineer on Zombie Boy, you know, in custom engine writing C code, right? It, sh it shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't have to look down here and oh my, so I could see that within the bullet points, you're actually explaining what you did as a producer, what you did as a game programmer, what you did as a graphics programmer, and what you did as a tools programmer. Um, wow, way too many words. If I can't, by reading the bullet point, determine that that's, you know, tooling, then, you know, there's no need for you to explicitly tell me what's a tools programming task versus what is a game programming task. I, I should be able to determine that on my own. Regardless, this is very much uh, leaning towards responsibilities than it is towards achievements. I would totally remove uh, the like the title precedent uh, of each one of these bullet points. Just directly jump into implemented OpenGL 4.4 renderer because that's an awesome achievement, right? And and that's actually um, that's a really cool bullet point, and it doesn't need to be reduced by you know explaining to the guy that it's a graphics programming task it's just totally unnecessary and we want to be as concise as possible with these resumes so you do want to chop out every bit of words that you can without hurting the the strength of the piece okay um so that can get a little bit fluffy and i want to ground some of my feedback there because you know what does it really mean to reword these things i wanted to take one of your examples and show you um you know what i would do with it so here I took the template I used from Melissa O'Connell. I don't think this would be a good template for your resume, but I just wanted to show you what it might look like in practice. And I've rewritten the bullet points which you have for your work on Zombie Boy. Okay, so let's zoom in there. If we can. <laughs> okay, here we go. And what I've done is I've just tried to reframe it. Uh, so, so here we go. So I've said... Gameplay programmer. Okay, so here we'll read your thing first. So Zombie Boy, Custom Engine, C, C. You know, Team Size 5, Dates. Graphics programming used Alpha Engine, which is a wrapper around OpenGL to render sprites and textures on screen. Okay, so the Alpha Engine. Unless you're applying to a job that need, that is using this Alpha Engine, you probably don't need that proper noun, and it's just another thing to confuse people. Instead, you should just say OpenGL wrapper. There's no need to, you know, use this proper noun alpha engine because it, it's just not relevant. No one cares, right? Unless you're going to be using it on your you know, on the job. Um, and then created a health system for the player, implemented basic movement AI. Uh, that just doesn't sound impressive, right? It does sound like a responsibility. And certainly the word basic is not helping us to, to make that sound like a really impressive achievement. So what I've done is I've kind of revisited uh, the work that you did there, and I found a different way to write it. Okay, so what I've read was um, led AI development on a 15 person team, coordinating implementation of movement and attack patterns through use of behavior trees and customized finite state machines. So, really, this places the focus back on the technology you're using, and it comes across much more like an achievement rather than a responsibility. Uh, leaning on the OpenGL work you did, I think it's really awesome that you were able to create a sprite renderer and a texture renderer and we want to list that as an exceptional achievement so we don't want it to read like a responsibility and so i've rephrased that to implemented custom sprite and texture renderer using opengl libraries okay and you could rephrase this uh, to be whatever alpha engine is but this is a much stronger way to say uh, what you did in the first bullet point 
Uh, finally, um, and I think this is really important if you're trying to be a gameplay engineer, you want to underscore your role as a team player. And, you know, it's great to say this is an achievement I made because I'm awesome. But we also want to hit on the point of like, hey, man, I helped empower others to get shit done as well. So this third bullet point is kind of addressing that. And so it says collaborated with designers to implement a unique health regeneration mechanic from paper to final release. Um, and maybe there's a better way to say that, but I want to show that you're a good collaborator with designer team members, right? These these XFN cross uh, functional uh, teammates, people who aren't also programmers, that you can speak their language and that you could help them get uh, their work out the door. So that's just a, a quick snapshot of how I would rewrite the Zombie Boy uh, line item. And hopefully that, as, long, as well as the uh, principles that I've described in that more generic uh, resume tutorial, will help you on your way to refining the resume and refining the portfolio to show off your traits as the awesome candidate that you are and hopefully land you the dream job. Thank you.